The Tao of Self-Confidence, Episode 368. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. Visit our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. Well, hello, friend. Welcome to the Tao of Self-Confidence, where I share stories of amazing women who have discovered their inner journey to self-confidence. I'm your host today, Sheena Yap Chan, and today I have a phenomenal lady on the show today. She is a model, and I'm just really excited to have her on today to share her story with us on self-confidence. So without further ado, I'm going to introduce you to Genuine Love. Genuine, how are you today? Maybe you can fill in a little bit more by yourself to our listeners. Hi, everybody. It's such a pleasure to be here right now. I'm very excited to be on this channel, to be talking with women and getting to know each other besides talking about, you know, the typical boy stuff, because I'm an international model that is a glamour model. I do magazines, calendars. I traveled the world to do appearances. I've danced and I've also done the UFC as a ring girl. And right now I'm back in Vancouver on a new journey. I want to start empowering women and talk talk about motivation and building confidence, you know, because I feel like that's what's really lacking right now in this generation. What do you feel about that, Sheena? Totally. That's why I created the show. I mean, I just feel like, first of all, there's not too much of a support system. And second, it's like if we can learn to build each other up, that's when we can make a huge difference. So. You know, it's great that you're doing that as well. I mean, the more the merrier. That's how I always see it. So thanks for sharing that. And Genuine, what's your cultural background? Um, I'm 100% Vietnamese. My parents were refugees that came over from Vietnam, and they had me in Canada. I'm Canadian. And right now they're both living in Vancouver. I'm living in Vancouver, but I spent most of my childhood traveling around, living in practically every place in Canada, from Edmonton to Calgary to Prince Rupert. Toronto. Yeah, I spent most of my childhood in Prince Rupert, though. That's where I I finally made some friends. Awesome. Well, thanks for sharing that. And what would be your favorite self-confidence quote? My favorite quote would be, she is clothed in strength and dignity, and she laughs without fear of the future. I think that's really important because for you to fully understand what strength and dignity means, like for you to feel fully confident in yourself and have the full vision of what you really want to do with yourself and then having the dignity to like, no matter what people say to you, like you cannot do that. You cannot be like this or you cannot be like that because you're a woman. And for you to be like, no, actually I can be like that. That's dignity. That's when you know who you are as a person and you laugh without fear of the future because you are so sure of yourself, so confident with your strength and dignity that you laugh because you already know, you already see your vision. Ten years from now, you already know what you're doing. And so you, you, you're not worried. And I really love that quote because I didn't understand it until I was awakened to my vision. And now I'm living a life where I'm totally relaxed because I know where I'm going and where I'm going to be in ten years. So I, I, I'm like, yeah, I'm laughing without fear of the future. And I feel like everyone should be living this way, you know? Like I want to teach everyone to look at the just changing your perspective can make you realize that life is actually very simple and you can live it really relaxing and happy and no stress at all but it's very also empowering and full of strength and power and passion thanks for sharing that and that's a great quote and you know it's it's great that you can um You've learned to live embracing the unknown and knowing that whatever happens, it's going to be okay. Because a lot of us fear that, right? We fear like, what if this doesn't work? What if that doesn't work? And sometimes we just need to let go of all the worries and just know that everything will fall into place. So, you know, I really love that quote that you mentioned. And in your own words, how would you define self-confidence? You know, if you were to ask me this question, like, how would I define self-confidence? Maybe five years ago, I would be like, oh, self-confidence is walking into a room and like knowing that no one's there is better than you or something. Oh, confidence is what, how you look that day, making sure you're really pretty. That, that would be my answer. But now I feel like confidence comes from accepting who you are, like not just accepting who you are, like looking in your mirror, but accepting your flaws, but in a deeper level, like accepting that you can be a bitch sometimes or accepting like, hey, I'm, I lashed out the other day for no reason because no one took the garbage out. I'm going to accept that I was wrong in that area because I was a bitch for no reason and that it was OK that no one took the garbage out. And when you do that for yourself, when you start accepting those levels of yourself, you, your confidence becomes a whole new 
layer. It becomes like an armor that you wear. And I, I'm, I even know how I'm explaining this because it's just through my own experience. And, and the, this confidence was just born out of me where suddenly I, I know every corner of myself, really know every corner of myself. And I can really look at myself in the mirror and know exactly what kind of person I am, what I will do and won't do, what I will accept and won't accept. And that confidence is what I feel like everyone should reach, like that real confidence in yourself. It doesn't even matter. You go outside and you can wear like a bag of garbage, a garbage bag, and you and you don't care if nobody, if someone looks at you, you don't care because you know you wore this garbage bag because you feel like you, you look great in it. And you are so sure, you know, and that's where everyone needs to get get to. Do you, you know what I mean, Sheena? I totally. It's just learning to own it no matter what happens, right? I mean, in a world of, in a world of like social media where everyone's like, you know, comparing themselves to all the people on Instagram and Facebook. Social media is like talking about social media. Like me, I have almost two million followers on social media. I've been doing it for 10 years and I felt at one point I was really into it. Like it was my life. Like I had five apps going on every day. I would wake up. First thing I do is check my social media. Then I'll plan my picture, which picture I would post, which uh, quotes I would say, what image do I want to portray? What looks do I want to do? Then I would edit more pictures for next week. So it became like a full time job to cont- to maintain this. And then when I hit when I hit my 1.5 million, it became so overwhelming. Like I, I had people emailing me all the time asking me like, are you alive? How come you didn't post a picture today? Are you OK? How come you didn't say anything today? And I'm like, oh, my God. I need some time to breathe. I need some time to live my life too. And I felt like that was what made me disconnect myself a little bit and made me realize, made me start asking like, what is life? Like, what is what is confidence or what is, why do I need these people to follow me to make me feel like I'm accomplished something? Is this really what life is about? And I think me asking all those questions started me to go, uh, started me on a journey to answer these questions plus more. And now I see the, the, the picture, like I'm on social media, but I'm not connected in a way that most people are anymore. Like I don't, I'm not always on my phone. Sometimes my phone is not even with me. People can get a hold of me for like days sometimes until someone tells me like, you need to check your phone. <laughs> you got work to do. And I'm like, oh yeah. <laughs> and I feel like sometimes you got to take a step back because I was examining other people's lives. I was so focused on watching what this girl is doing at the beach or this other girl is drinking or what this girl is wearing, what lash this girl is wearing, what I lip, st- lip gloss this other girl is wearing, that I would buy all this stuff and not even use it. It would just sit there. Do you have stuff that you buy from Instagram? I'm pretty sure you have some things that you've been eyeing on Instagram too, right? Like shoes and stuff. Yeah, I mean, I've learned to minimize some of the stuff I was before like that. I would just buy anything and everything and not realizing like I didn't use half of it. And, you know, just just doing these things and noticing, you know, all this stuff, like it really helped me realize like I don't need validation from that. I can be who I am and there's people out there who will love me for who I am. Or not, you know, love me. It's no big deal, right? So, you know, I'm I'm glad you actually brought this this up about you, you know, having a huge following on on social media and like, you know, talking about like having this like, you know, this this a part of you trying to validate every one of your followers when you re- really you didn't have to, right? They love you for who you are, and you know, it's it's crazy. We're, we're all guilty of it, right? We're all guilty of it. I know I have been, and like right now I'm taking a social media break because it's just like I just need a breather as well. What was your life like before your discovery of self-confidence? I was always, I've never, because I moved so much, I, I actually built my own confidence. Fake, I call it fake confidence because you never really have confidence. Back in the day, I never felt, now I have confidence. But now when I look back, I, I, I can strongly say that I didn't have confidence, but I had fake confidence, which is when you just go and do it, you know, even though you feel like, oh, my God, people are looking at me. Oh, my God, I shouldn't do this. But you do it anyways, because you had to or you had to do something. And people are like, oh, my God, you're so confident. You're like, yeah, I know. I'm so confident. But you go home and you're like, oh, my God, I swear people were looking at me weird and this, that. You always picnic, pick and picking every negative things about yourself always and you don't notice you do it and and until i noticed that by using affirmations you can change your mindset on on how you feel about yourself it really changed on how i changed how my life could have been back in the day because back in the day i was shy i was super shy i moved around a lot i had i barely had friends and so i just be quiet or else i like say one or two things but once, it, but then one day I started saying something funny and someone laughed and they're like, you're funny. So I was like, oh, OK, I'm going to use that then. So I started becoming funnier and funnier, just saying random stuff on my mind. 
and people start laughing. And that's what made me have more confidence, more confidence. So I started talking more, talking more. And just honestly, from people bullying me or people trying to bully me, I just stood my ground. And I was just like, no, nah, I ain't, I ain't going to have any of this. And because of those kind of situations, it also helped me build confidence too. But again, fake confidence, like wild lion confidence. You know, when you have to be a lion or else you get eaten kind of confidence. Yeah, I totally um, understand that. Like, you know, even though if you're scared, you do it. And, you know, it's crazy, right? Because a lot of people fear like just taking that first step. And some of us, we just do it without thinking. And sometimes, you know, they have this like term that can be taken in a good or bad way. Fake it till you make it. It's like, you know, you're just pretending like what if you know there was no fear what would you do and you just go ahead and do it right and it helps you build confidence so you know these little things really help you out and like you mentioned you know using affirmations helped you out you know people accepting you for saying just random stuff and you were okay with that and standing your ground from bullying because those are things that you know most people are afraid to even do right I mean they're afraid to say to themselves I am beautiful right? Because it feels weird to them because they're not used to it. Or, you know, it, and it's true because I used to feel that way. I look in the mirror and I'm like, this is the weirdest thing ever. You know, you're just not used to it. But the more you keep on doing it, the more confidence you build. And, you know, because of that, what's your life been like now? My life has been a total flip. Seriously, I can't eat. I don't even know you can live your life like this. Like when I'm try- trying to tell people like, girl, when my girlfriend's telling me like, Jen, I don't understand why I feel like this. I feel like that. I'm just trying to always trying to change their, their perspective. I'm like, you got to think like this. You got to switch your mindset. You got to think like this. And they're like, are you sure it's that simple? Are you sure? I'm like, yes, man. I'm telling you, I've been experiencing, experimenting with my own life for over a year now. And like I, I document my, my results. And I asked other people to do tests for me and I document their results because I couldn't believe that by simply saying affirmations to yourself, you can totally change the way your life and circumstances and people you meet and anything. You can change it to however you want to, want to do it. And if I knew that, I would have did my life completely different. But I'm not regretting anything because honestly, the experience I learned in my life is what made me become who I am today, is what made me have this realization that we can all do this. Like the fear, I I used to be afraid of a lot of things, man. I used to have a list of things I was afraid of and be proud of it. Like I'm afraid of spiders. I'm afraid of water. I'm afraid of the dark. I'm afraid of speech. I'm afraid. I just name it for people to know my fears. And for some reason, the universe brought me circumstances that ask me, do I want to face my fear or do I not? And and for some reason, in those times when it was presented to me, I said yes. So I went with yes and I faced it. And after I faced it, I thought I realized it was nothing. And I felt freaking amazing, like swimming in the ocean. I was afraid of that. But I did it anyways, because I was like, no way in hell I'm going to get controlled over some freaking H- H2O water or whatever. So I jumped in. And after I jumped in, I was like, holy crap, this is nothing. I feel like I'm so powerful. And then I swear I became a junkie, a junk, a junkie to like feel the winning of fear because I started doing other things that I was afraid of. And, and even though at that time I'm sweating and I'm like nervous, but I just do it anyways. And I realized every time I do it, it, it gets smaller and smaller and smaller until now my fear list is like nothing. And right now it's still speech. For me, speech is still quite on top of the list. Even right now I'm nervous talking with you. But I'm doing it because like I have to get over this if I want to portray, if I want to go forward with my vision with speaking in a stadium or speaking on stage, I have to eventually be totally comfortable with speaking any time of the day, right? Any time at all. Thanks for sharing that. And that's great. You know, a lot of women who actually come on this on the show are afraid of speaking or afraid of sharing, but they do it anyways, because they know it can help another person out there. And to be honest, you're doing great on the interview. I didn't even know you were nervous. So I just wanted to point that out. And if our listeners are listening to your episode, and they're in a similar journey of self confidence, what would be that one tip you would give to them? For us girls, us women, if we're going on a journey of confidence, not to do it alone, like reach out, because like we feel like we're alone. We feel like maybe we're the only one that think this way or we're the only one that want to be like this or that, like that. But that's actually not true. There are actually, I, I, every like 10 girls I talk to, nine of them talk about wanting to connect with other women and talk about how they wish that there was another person to talk to about problems, to talk about strength, to even just come over, come together for coffee and talk about what you did this week and your problems and then like help each other out. And that's what made me realize, oh my God, like 
this is what this maybe this is what's missing. Maybe us women are just not talking. We're just not speaking up to each other. We're not even mentioning that we're suffering or that we're that hey, we want to do this big thing. Because a lot of girls think that other girls are maybe just ditzy or maybe we're just into bags. There are girls that are into that, but there are a large number of girls who actually want to do something huge, change the world. And I feel like just as long as you speak up, someone will come to you. And talking about that too, especially if, you're, if I'm talking about attracting uh, uh, affirmations and energy, when you bring yourself to that energy where you are searching, not searching, but you this that you're looking for someone to start a business with, you're starting, you're looking for confidence, you're looking for, I don't know, to f- like anything at all. You, you start attracting that energy. And when you do that, the universe will bring you the people to talk to. So for example, I'm starting a business and I say, I want to start a business in helping children. And I never even helped children before, but I, I just said it. I'm like, I am just going to start a business in helping children. And all of a sudden, out of the blue, I'll get a phone call and the phone call will be like, hi, hey, it's, it's my friend. And my friend is like, hey, um, I don't know if this is your area or not, but like uh, I need a teacher to teach a class for two months. And it's a bridging course. You don't really need experience. I just need you to come and just teach the class. And I'm like, whoa, like, OK, yes, take I'll, I'll take it. And then boom, you just open the door to teaching children, even though you never even done anything. And that's actually a real story. I just told you my own experience. So imagine what you could be doing when you just change your the way you're thinking, the energy that you're pulling. If you're thinking, oh, I never get work. I'm always I'm always fired. I'm always laid off. Well, yeah, you're going to get that because that's the type of energy you're asking for. So if you start saying stuff like, oh, my God, I got so much job offers, so much job offers. My email is packed. Trust me, I'm telling you right now, that's exactly what's going to happen. People from random places are going to start emailing you. You're going to have so much work, you don't even know what to do with it. So affirmations, confidence, affirmation, convictions, those kind of words can go a long, long, long way. Thanks for sharing all those amazing tips. I mean, you know, it's true. Just, you know, a simple task like changing your thinking can make a huge difference. So thanks again. And if our listeners wanted to Get to know a little bit more about you and what you do. Is there any links or social media profiles we can connect with? Yes, I'm on uh, Instagram, uh, underscore Genuine Love. I, I'm also on Facebook, Official Genuine. Uh, right now, I'm rebuilding my website because, I, like I said, I started from a glam model, but now I'm changing my niche where I'm not losing the whole modeling thing, but I'm just expanding, evolving, developing myself into a more rounded, positive more of a message so i'm rebuilding my website for that i'm also going to be launching a youtube channel where i'm going to be doing comedy skit my stand-up is going to be on there i'm going to be doing uh confidence beauty everything natural everything funny positive loving just love and light for sure that's my mission for 2017 thanks for sharing that and to our listeners if you want to connect with genuine you can also head on over to the tau selfconfidence.com and search for genuine's name her show notes will pop up along with everything else we talked about and i just want to thank genuine for taking the time today to share her story with us on self-confidence so thank you so much no no problem it was seriously such a pleasure i would love to do it again and we should just keep sharing because that's the only way we're going to grow and evolve so don't be afraid don't be afraid of anything just trust your spirit trust your intuition and just go forward with whatever your mind is thinking no matter how crazy it is because you're there at the right moment, at the right place, always, always at this, always. So just follow it. Thanks again. And to our listeners, be on the lookout for another new episode of Another Amazing Woman's Journey to Self-Confidence. And we'll talk to you soon. Bye for now. Bye. Thank you for tuning in to another amazing episode of The Tao of Self-Confidence. Get your free audiobook by visiting our website at thetaoofselfconfidence.com. Your inner journey to self-confidence awaits. 